Do you want to run an agentic rag running locally without using any API keys? Well, I got you covered. In my previous videos, I have covered topics like multimodal agents, agentic rag, but the thing is, I was using Gemini LLM and most of you wanted to run the entire pipeline locally. And the second requirement was you wanted the video on LangChain. And I heard you guys. In this video, we will build a rag app using LangChain and the agentic component using Agno. Now coming to the local part, we will use open source large language models, embedding model and as well as vector database. So let's get started. The first step is let's understand the architecture diagram. As I mentioned, the RAG app will be dependent on LangChain and I've already covered 10 videos on how you can build RAG pipeline using LangChain. You can probably check out the tutorial video. The first requirement is you need to have your own data. This data can be your PDF, Excel, CSV, YouTube video, anything. Once you have your data ready, you need to use the relevant loader. In our case, we will be using a web page. So the loader is web based loader. And once you have the raw documents, the next step is you need to convert that into a chunk. So in order to convert that into chunks, we will be using recursive character text splitter so that we can fit to the model context window by converting the document into smaller chunks. And once you have your smaller chunks, the next step is you need to convert the chunk into embedding model. This is where we will be using fast embed by Qdrun. The reason why I am using fast embed instead of fucking face is because it converts the model weights into Onyx runtime so that it becomes fast and lightweight. And the second reason is it supports data parallelism, which is the additional functionality that Quadrant team provides. So we'll directly use this particular fast embed embeddings. Don't forget to start the repository so that it supports the team in order to building new features as well. Once you convert your data into embeddings, the next step is you have your document vectors and you need to save these document vectors inside a vector DB. And in our case, the vector DB is Quadrant Vector Store. Quadrant again is open source and there are three different ways using which you can save your data. The first step is you can use in-memory location. The second step is you can use a local host where you are running your Quadrant client on Docker. The third step is you can use cloud services that is provided by Quadrant. In our case, we will be using in-memory where you will be saving your vectors inside a persist directory. Now that you have the knowledge base which is built using LangChain, you need to connect this knowledge base to a agentic workflow. And in order to build the agentic workflow, we will be using Agno agent. Uh, so Agno again was previously known as PyData and the previous videos of multimodal agent was also built using PyData and now it is renamed as Agno. So in order to build this pipeline, the first step is you need to have a knowledge base using which you can interact with the user queries. So now that you have your knowledge base ready, the next step is you need to have an LLM model. Again, we are using open source LLM from Olama. So once you have the LLM and the knowledge base, the next step is you need to integrate the agent where you will pass the user query and where you will get your final response. So this is the entire pipeline on how you need to build a uh, agentic rag using LangChain and Agno. So let's proceed with code implementation. If you are new to LangChain, don't worry. As I already mentioned, there is an entire playlist dedicated to LangChain from basics to advanced. Go check out the playlist in the description. All right, it's time for code implementation. The first step is we need to install the libraries. In order to build the agentic pipeline, we will be using Agno. Up next for using the open source LLMs and embeddings, we will be using Olama and fast embed from Quadrant. Up next, in order to build the knowledge base, we need to have LangChain components. So I'll be using LangChain community and LangChain. And for creating the vector store, I'll be needing Quadrant. So we have this particular libraries already installed in our system. So I'll proceed with the import statements. We have the document loaders, which is the website loader. And then we have chunking. And then we have the embedding model. And then we have the vector store. Since we want to read the data from the collection, which is saved in memory of Quadrant. There are few Quadrant client import statements that we need to use. Once you have your retrieval pipeline ready, that is your LangChain knowledge base, I need to have my agentic workflow ready. So this is where I'll be using Agno from agno.agent import agent. And then in order to use the LangChain knowledge base, we can use the knowledge base from Agno itself. And lastly, we have our LLM, which is Olama. 
and in order to use olama you need to install it locally you can follow the steps which is listed down in the olama and these are the libraries or the supported models that olama provides in our case we will be using llama 3.1 so in order to use this model what you need to do is you just have to run this command o llama run llama 3.1 that's it and if i open my terminal as you can see it is already existing in my terminal as well i'll just close this let me close this and if i run o llama ls you will see there are few models which is already existing in my directory i have llama 3.1 i have deep sea carbon as well now that your installation is done Let's build the retrieval pipeline, and now I'll use a URL from Quadrant documentation. Once you have the URL, the next step is you need to pass it inside a web-based loader. So web-based loader will give you the raw documents. Once you have those raw documents, you need to convert that into smaller chunks. So in order to convert your raw documents into chunks, you need to provide your chunk size and chunk overlap, which is thousand twenty-four and fifty. and once you have your chunks ready the next step is you need to use an embedding model from fast embed if you are following my tutorial videos from beginning you might have known that i always use this particular model as it's much better when it comes to retrieval augmented generation and once you have these things ready the next step is you need to set up your quadrant database and in order to define quadrant in memory what we need to do is we need to provide the path where we need to save the embedding model and next we need to define a collection name collection name needs to be unique for each data change that you have if for example if i have my own data i need to have a collection name which is unique the next time when this data is getting changed you need to have a new collection name the reason why this is very important is explained in the try and accept block so when you are building a rack pipeline you need to index the document this is one time process the next time when you are asking the same user question from the same document you don't want to create this indexing again this is why in order to avoid the indexing again you need to define a unique collection name so if the collection name is already present obviously you will get a accept block and it will create a new collection name so this needs to happen only once and once you have defined the client the next step is you need to define your quadrant vector store from langchain So this is the langchain method, which is quadrant vector store. You need to define the client name and the collection name, which is unique, and the embedding model, which is fast embed. Once you have the vector store ready, add all your chunk data inside the vector store. So as you can see, I'm adding vector store dot add documents, each and every chunks that I have. Now that we have saved all the chunks inside a vector store the next step is we need to define a retriever that is our knowledge base so whenever i as a user ask any user question i need to generate the relevant documents so this is where i need to define the knowledge base from langchain and then read it from agno so let's define those two steps so now what i'll do is i'll just write retriever equals to vector store dot as retriever this is the langchain syntax and once you have the retriever in place you need to define the knowledge base which is from agno so if you look at this particular uh, instantiation you will see from agno.knowledge.langchain import langchain knowledge base so we will define this knowledge base and then you need to pass the retriever so far we have our retriever pipeline ready the next step is you need to build your agentic workflow which is just three lines of code but as you can see you need to define the model name which is olama that runs locally and then you have the knowledge base which is our langchain knowledge base the entire rag app which is your retrieval pipeline built using langchain needs to be defined in the knowledge base you can also give a description saying answer to the user question from the knowledge base so this is the description which is provided to the agent as a instruction and then i need to generate the entire response in the markdown syntax there is also one more parameter which is search knowledge to be true so that it can interact from the knowledge base that is already provided now that you have defined your agent the next step is we need to execute our agentic rag by providing a user query so let's define the user query and run the agent so the user query is the most commonly used distance metrics as per the document so this is the user query and then i just have to run agent dot print response user query stream equals to true so this is first approach the second approach is you can also use response equals to agent dot run user query 
and you can return the content out of it. So this is the second method that you can use and then you just have to run print response. So once this is done, what we will do is we will check our application. Uh, let me check the documentation page. So these are the three metrics. You have cosine similarity, you have dot product and you have Euclidean distance. So let's run this app and check what are the results. As you can see, we already have our final response and the final response is dot product, cosine similarity and Euclidean distance. This is as per the knowledge base that we have. And this is it from this video. We built a complete agentic rag without using any API keys. We used open source embedding model, large language model and a vector database. And this is it. And this was for the community since they wanted this video. Don't forget to subscribe now.